All right, so tides. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the idea of tides, um, but maybe haven't really thought about why they exist. So um, this is gonna come back to our discussion of gravity. So question for you, at which point on earth is the gravitational pull from the moon the largest? Okay, I see the most votes for point A, which is totally right. So if I was gonna draw the size of the gravitational force that each of these points feels, um, A would be the strongest, uh, B and C I haven't drawn, but B would be weaker than A, C would be weaker than B, and D would be the very weakest. Why is this? Because if I consider any you know, chunk of mass at those four locations, uh, A is closest to the moon. So the closer, the stronger the force. So this is basically what creates the tides is the pull from the moon on earth. And because there's a different amount of force on either side of earth, the uh, water, which is free to flow across the earth's surface, bulges out toward the moon on the side closest to the moon. And it also bulges out on the side farthest away. And that might seem weird, but it's not just the water that's feeling this differential force. It's also the earth itself. So you can think of the far side of earth being pulled a little farther than the far side water. And so that's why there's a bulge on the far side as well. Okay, so the earth then turns under these two bulges so that every observer on earth experiences one high tide and one low tide per day. In the way I have this drawn where the North Pole is sticking out of the top of the earth, then the observer experiencing low tide would be the one on the surface pointed directly at us from the screen. So two high tides and two low tides per day based on our tide geometry. Okay, so the sun has a little bit of influence. Um, it has a stronger total force on the earth than the moon does because it's so much more massive, even though it's so far away. Um, but the tidal force from the sun is smaller than the tidal force from the moon because the difference in how much it pulls on either side of the earth is very small compared to the difference in force from the moon. Um, this is a little bit difficult to explain conceptually, um, but if you're curious about why, you can look up the um, math for tides is on the tide Wikipedia page. Um, so if you can follow that argument, it'll tell you geometric or algebraically why that's the case. Um, but anyway, for our purposes, suffice it to say that the sun has less influence than the moon because it, it has less of a difference in the force that it pulls the earth on either side of the earth. But it does have a small influence. And so therefore, when the earth, moon, and sun are aligned, then the tides are a little bit bigger. And so what we call this is the spring tide, not because it happens in the spring. I don't know why it's called spring tide, because they spring up to a higher position, I guess. Um, and so this is when the sun's gravitational force increases the overall side, size of the tides. So I'm pretty sure with spring tides, you have higher highs and lower lows because that water has built up to make the highs higher. Therefore, it must have flowed away to make the low tides lower as well. Okay, so question for you, based on the alignment that is required to produce a spring tide, what phase could produce a spring tide? I see the most votes for one, the new moon. That's exactly right. So when the, the new moon was the one I showed you on the last image, the sun or the moon is between the sun and the earth, but this could also happen at the full moon for the same reason, because the uh, gravitational poles would be aligned. So spring tides happen both at new and at full. Um, if that's a little bit confusing, you can think about like, why would it also happen at full? The moon is providing one kind of amount of tide and the sun is producing a second amount of tide and those add up together. And both of them create a bulge toward and away from the object creating the tide. So when they're aligned, those add up. Um, when they're misaligned though, then they don't add up. And so in this case, the moon's tide would be pulling 
um, kind of up and down, but the sun's tide would be pulling side to side. This shouldn't really be drawn this way. We should be looking down from the North Pole and this should be pulling at the equators. So sorry, this diagram is a little bit misleading. Okay, so anyway, the net influence of this is that the moon's influence would be decreased a little bit because of the sun's influence pulling some water away from those uh, bulges from the moon. So this is what we call the neap tide. And this is when the tides have lower highs and higher lows. So the total amplitude of how much the tide goes up and down on the beach would be less during the, the neap tides. Okay, so when could the neap tides occur? Okay, I'm seeing most votes for the first quarter moon. We know it's not new or full because that's when the spring tides occur. Um, and so you can probably deduce it shouldn't be one of the waning or waxing phases because those aren't kind of perpendicular to the new and full phases. So instead, the neap tides happen at first quarter and they also happen at third quarter. So we've got two neap tides per month, two spring tides per month, and then during the in intervening phases, um, they're kind of moving from between those extremes from strong to weak to strong to weak. 